Afternoon chaps. This is quite an interesting bit of kit here really. I've been trying to find out about it for quite a few years. I've had this since I was about 12. I bought it from an antiques fair. And as you can see it's a pretty nice bit of wood. It looks like some um, interesting hardware with these brass attachments with the rubber, rubber footings. Leather handle which is unfortunately broken since we moved the house. And I'll just open her up inside and I'll show you what this toy is. There you go. Pretty impressive, huh? This was sold to me as an exploder. And I have since found out that this is pretty much for testing the uh, fuse wires for their resistance and therefore working out how much uh, explosive is needed to, to start the uh, uh, to start the explosion. I think, pretty much. I don't, I'm don't. i not really uh, that up on explosives, unfortunately. But that seems to be the old school way of doing it. You can see it has a resistance meter here, a galvanometer, and all these different controls. And there is the instruction set. If anyone's interested, they can pause it on that one there. And it says on there you can test a circuit for continuity for a Pruka test. I'm not totally sure you should be doing that on the battlefield. Define resistance of a circuit and the fusion test. And that's define the power of exploder or firing battery. I think that's pretty damn cool. So this isn't actually an exploder itself. An exploder, as far as I can understand, is the actual plunger itself, which you use to kind of the old school way of detonating. Uh, so this is just testing, testing for that sort of thing. This is an interesting one. This is not original. I have since found out from the wonderful people uh, over on one of them, kind of like, it's like an amateur radio forum where they uh, know all about everything, it seems. I'm not an amateur radio guy, unfortunately, and that'd be quite fun. Basically, originally, the service model was like that. And as you can see down there, this is apparently for spares. It wouldn't have had these um, uh, slats here. And as you can see, you can attach something on there. This is canvas. And another one I've seen has got brass, brass attachment there. You can see all the gunk. This is just from the um, from unscrewing it. So that's quite interesting itself. And it has, at one point, let me just get a torch, been connected. Or perhaps that's just sitting. Actually, I'll show you on the other side. So this isn't original. But the interesting thing about this one is you might think, well, this thing turns on this is the resistance meter. Well, no, this thing turns on the resistance one. Well, no, apparently not. There you go. There is no connection between this and this switch. What the hell's going on? I have absolutely no idea. This, this piece of wood doesn't fit with this. In terms of it's not the same wood, and this is this is a veneered in kind of like an old, in like a, a retro a retro wood. You see, it's chipped off there. But there is no connection between this switch and this. Any ideas? Just shout them out, and I will be very happy to receive them because I have literally no fucking clue what's going on here. And then we have the main panel itself, which. I have undone all the screws, so that one was screwed on before, I've just unscrewed it. And then here's the main panel, which I'll try and lift up without damaging the inside. Hang on, let me just get the camera down. There we go. Panel out. That's the battery connection there, as you can see the wires have been cut, not by me. But I imagine when it was uh, released onto the surplus market, it was um, deactivated effectively, as you can see down to there. Pretty grubby. It's a pretty large battery as well. And that's the inside of that. And then here's the back of the exploder, the tester itself. And you can see the wire. All of these have got what I can only describe as I thought was maybe Loctite on them. But I'm not entirely sure what that purpose of that is for. Imagine just to make sure nothing comes out when you're using the uh, the panel. It's quite interesting. And on the back of this one here, you won't be able to see in there, unfortunately, I think. And you may be able to just adjust. Let's get some light on there. No, you can't. Well, the inside of this one... Where is it? The inside of this the galvanometer... And this, I've just got the, uh, the quotes down here. It says G76132 in a white stamp. 
and then kind of as part of the the the, uh, the device itself it says San Gamo S A N G A M O Western Limited Enfield Middlesex England M I D D X dot E N G dot and there's another white stamp beneath it W A nine five four three in a white stamp. There's an interesting red sign which is the same as on this resistance meter. It's this red red mark up here. I, I thought maybe that was a positive terminal. That's just a guess. So yeah, very confusing. Really no idea what the hell's going on with this, given the resistance meter was not connected to this. And there it may have once been something it was connected to. As you can see, there's the, the pass-through hole there. But for what? No idea. So if you have any ideas about how this resistance meter may have related to this, including this, this, this not connected in any way, shape or form ever switch. The battery type. And what's going on in terms of just everything, <laughs> really. Everything except for the meaning of life in this video, I think, is, is the important thing here. Um, so yeah, just please just give me a shout and help me out here, guys. Cheers.